Hey everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be talking about a few different games from this year that I've liked so far in 2024. It's about, you know, the halfway point through the year, so I thought it'd be a good time to look at the, the best games that have come out so far, and I have nine games here. I'm going to be putting them in chronological order based on when they came out, so starting with Pal World, which came out January 19th, and Pal World is probably a game that you've heard of. It's was very popular when it came out. It's, yeah, it kind of took the world by storm there for a little bit. Yeah, it's it's uh, everybody's heard about it. It's basically better Pokemon. Uh, it's kind of what Game Freak has been trying to go for with their open world thing with Scarlet and Violet, but they just kind of missed the mark and Pal World uh, was able to hit that mark. And it's a really unique gameplay blend. It is a survival craft game. There are guns in it. You can, I mean, it's just a survival craft game. Um, those mechanics aren't super crazy or over the top, but that's how you get new things is you typically have to craft everything you're getting. But then there's also like a lot of good exploration. There's these dungeons all around the map and the, the map is really vast and fun to explore. And you can go to these dungeons, try to catch the dungeon Pokemon and uh, or pals, I guess you, you should call them. Just uh, yeah, collecting your pals, building up your survival base, um, building up all the different things that you can craft, uh, building guns, being able to yeah just do all that. It's, it's just a really fun game and and uh, they were able to pull it off very well. Pal World, you've probably heard about it, but moving on to February 8th of 2024 is when Helldivers 2 came out. There's been some controversy lately with this game uh, about PlayStation trying to make you sign into your PlayStation account in order to play it even on PC, and then it getting taken off the market in a lot of different countries, and while all that has made the reviews go to mixed on Steam, I still think it deserves to be in the top games of this year, to be honest. The gameplay is really fun, everything about it's good. It's it's just a really refreshing, unique third-person shooter. It's really crazy too. It, no other game really captures that like sense of crazy, like hecticness. Swarms and swarms of enemies attacking you and trying desperately to use your stratagems to blow them up and complete the objective and kill as many of them as you can as quickly as you can. It's it's just really fun. They did the timing system really well, where you have to like complete puzzles, and then once you complete the puzzles, that's when you've completed the task. Calling in stratagems, things like that, and and doing your objectives. That's just a really cool way to do the timing system rather than just oh, you click the button and you sit there and wait like a lot of games do. The graphics are super good. The audio is really good. The the whole thing where everybody's in like a shared game world and there's uh, Joel DMing the whole thing and everybody's fighting for the same cause uh, is super fun, super unique. And Helldivers 2 is just one of the greats. It's one of the best games that have come out in the last few years, uh, in my opinion, in general. Highly recommend you play Helldivers 2 if you were living under a rock when it came out. Uh, yeah, you got to check it out. Bags empty! Say hello! Reinforcing! A little bit later, a few days later, on February 13th, 2024, the game Ultros released. Now, Ultros is not that popular. It only has like 300 reviews on Steam at the time of me recording this, but I think it really deserves to be in the in the best because this game's fantastic in every single way. Um, it's just, it's got a really good art style. The graphics are amazing, very artistic. It's like a very otherworldly sort of psychedelic style of world where things like kind of make sense, but they're also completely fantastical. Um, and it's just really interesting to explore. It's also a Metroidvania, so the whole like gameplay progression is in and of itself a puzzle, and that is really fun to solve. You have to do certain things to get certain items to unlock new areas, and then that's how you like progress in the game. It's really fun. The combat system's really good. It's not just you know a, a hack and slash like you walk up and, and button spam a few different buttons. It's like there's actually a system to it, and depending on what happens is uh, determines how you should respond. There's just a lot of fun there, and it's just good in every single way very atmospheric very good music and sound design and visually it's just stunning I, I would highly recommend Ultros it was one of my favorites of the year and it's really not that popular and I think it deserves a lot more love so yeah check this game out if it seems interesting to you
A little bit later that month, in February 21st, 2024, the game Last Epoch released. And Last Epoch, I admittedly need to play a bit more of. Uh, however, I played quite a bit of it, still. It's just really good because, as everybody knows, Diablo 4 came out last year, I think, or maybe two years ago, and, and that game just wasn't it. Uh, there's a lot of issues with it. I just really didn't sit well with Diablo 4, which was disappointing because I really liked the first three games. And so I really was kind of itching for a new action RPG style game and Last Epoch really hit the mark on that, in my opinion. Just a solid ARPG in every single way. It's got a super unique time-traveling aspect where you need to, like, go back in time to go and progress through certain areas and then go forward in time to continue progressing. It's, it's got a good storyline uh, attached to all that as well. The character customization is really good. There's a lot of unique classes and things that are not stereotypical fantasy, like, kind of new concepts, especially in the class design, which I really enjoy. And the graphics are really good. The game just, uh, what stood out to me is the game looked really good and, uh, had a lot of cool looking enemy concepts, character concepts, and, uh, captured that really good ARPG aesthetic as good as any other game. So, uh, really good ARPG this year. Would recommend checking it out. Speaking of RPGs, the next game I'm going to cover came out in March 21st of this year, and that is Dragon's Dogma 2. I remember this month really well because there were a few different games coming out that I was excited for, uh, and unfortunately, Dragon's Dogma 2 was really the only one that actually turned out to be a good game. The other one was uh, Star Wars Battlefront 2, or the Star Wars Battlefront Collection. Rest in peace that game, it was not good, and that was really, really upsetting for me, because I love the Star Wars Battlefront games, but at least Dragon's Dogma was able to actually be a good game for me in that month. Dragon's Dogma 2 is just a really good ARPG. You know, medieval fantasy action RPG is right up my alley. Of course, I'm going to get that immediately and be interested. The companion system in this game's really good. It's really fun to customize what companions you have and sort of what they do and how they act and then determine who you want on your team based on that. For example, I had a wizard in my party and this wizard would run out ahead of me towards the objective that I had marked, but because they were a wizard and they were really weak, they would end up aggroing enemies earlier than everybody else just because they were running out ahead and then this would cause them to die really quickly just because they would just suddenly be in the middle of combat without any backup and they didn't have a lot of armor so I ended up switching them out with somebody else. So it's things like that you have to keep in mind with this game, and I like that sort of strategic aspect of it. But the pawn system in general is really fun. It's fun to have your own party of minions running around that fight with you. That's always a good time. On top of that, the combat system is really good. There's uh, light and heavy attacks and a good dodging and kiting system that makes it feel really fun. Also a lot of good character customization as, uh, as well as customizing your own companions. There's a lot of different types of weapons you can choose, a lot of different armors, and that always is a good way to change up the game. The world and graphics are phenomenal in this game. I mean, it, it's probably the the best looking game that I have from this year, I would say. This or Helldivers 2 just look phenomenal. People did complain about some micro trans transactions in the game, which is why it didn't get the best reviews when it released. However, I will say that you don't really notice those that much. You can basically play through the entire game without noticing any kind of microtransactions. It's completely possible to play through the game without doing that. In that regard, I can't really complain. I still think they did a good job. I don't see why they can't have microtransactions in it, especially if they're not necessary. And so yeah, Dragon's Dogma 2 is very good. I would highly recommend it if you like uh, like medieval fantasy RPGs, uh, popular genre, and this is a good game in that genre. We've got the beast reeling. If we pick this up, we'll lock its feet on. It's out from under it. Strike fast and true, and our quarry shall fall. An ill-timed dodge, and I'll cover these bruises. 
moving on to the month of April, day 26th of 2024, the game Manor Lords came out. Now this is technically still in beta. This is like a beta release, an early access release. So it's not completely done yet and there are some game breaking glitches, which is why I wouldn't say this is my favorite game of the year, but if those get patched out, it definitely will be. If you haven't heard of Manor Lords, it's it's been very hyped up for a long time in the sort of strategy people that like to strategy games i guess and like 4x style games and things like that um this has been hyped up for years as, as soon as it was um announced people were excited for it it's a feudal economy simulator is probably the best way to put it which doesn't sound appealing but basically what that entails is you're a feudal lord and you're trying to build up your like economy in a certain area or province as much as you can in order to compete with other feudal lords around you so you're trying to see what types of natural resources your little province has and then exploit those to become as rich as possible um, and you need to like manage how many people are coming into your your area how many families you can hire out to do certain jobs uh, what you should focus on in order to make the most amount of money and grow the most like as quickly as you can and that aspect is really fun and then after that you can build armies and conquer other lords around you I just really like games where you are trying to make the number go up as much as possible like rpgs and 4x games really do that for me so this was like perfect and then also the city building aspect's really fun you basically build up a medieval village and then into a city and that's always a good time i like the city skylines games if you like those it's kind of like that and then the combat system is also really good i mean you build up your own army get to choose what that army is composed of and then you get to tell it if it's gonna you know try to push forward or bait them into an attack there's a lot of different things you can do strategically or i guess this would be tactically when you're actually fighting and then there's a lot of strategy that goes into building up those armies that whole system just feels really really good there are a few things they need to flesh out in the future and then there's also some issues with glitches at this point but i think once the game is fully completed and they fully release it this will be one of the best economy simulator style of games uh that'll be out manor lords A few days later, on May 6th, the game Hades 2 came into early access. So this is another example where the game isn't actually fully released, but it did go into early access, which means that I think it counts. So Hades 2, much like Hades 1, is it just has a really good combat system. It just feels so satisfying to dodge the attacks and, and attack the enemy. And that, that whole combat system concept just is very fast paced, very fun. There's a lot of good tactical aspects to it. that that's always a good time. The roguelite system on this game is, is perfect. There's just a really fun uh, leveling and progression system that is outside of the actual roguelike runs that you do. And it just, it feels so good with the perks that you get in the roguelite or when you're doing the run or when you get back and you're able to spend the resources that you got from those runs on different things. There's also a bit of a base building aspect to it where you can customize your home base area to a certain point. Um, and that part's really fun. All of it, it's just done really well. It's done just as good as Hades 1 except the graphics are the themes are a bit different and, and not in a bad way it's very colorful and it looks really good the graphics and visuals are, are phenomenal it's all like kind of hand-drawn and the the story is interesting if you liked Hades 1 Hades 2 is going to be great if you haven't played any of them like it's just a really fun uh, roguelites with a really good combat system just does all of those in the most perfect way possible this series is kind of for me the quintessential roguelite they just did every single aspect perfectly also the Greek mythology part about it is really cool so yeah Hades 2 
Moving on to the game V Rising, which came out a couple days later. This was actually a case of a game that came into early access, I think last year or two years ago, and just came out of early access and fully released on May 8th. So this is an actual full release. And V Rising is a, it's an ARPG vampire simulator. You're playing as a vampire. It's also a survival craft game too, interestingly enough. So there's a base building aspect to it where you can build your own like dark vampire vampire castle out in the middle of the woods and there's a whole like build up survival craft part of that aspect of it but then also there's uh bosses that you're trying to fight and harness their powers to use on your your own you can transform into different animals you can go loot humans and like villages and stuff and try to get goodies from them obviously i'm not a big fan of survival craft stuff i, I don't really like that as much so those those parts of the game are are done well for survival craft but like i said survival craft isn't really my thing but the arpg elements of this are super fun. Uh, the fighting bosses, the just trying to level up and get more abilities and things like that. That is just, uh, that's super satisfying and done incredibly well. And the survival craft parts are done super well too, so there aren't really any complaints. One of the cool parts about the game is since you're playing as a vampire when it's daytime, you need to like stay out of the sun, so you need to kind of stay in the shadows in the daytime, and then at nighttime you can kind of roam free wherever you want. You don't want to be fighting a boss right when it turns to daytime because then there's not really a a lot of places for you to go and not die in the boss arena. You always want to like try to get to a boss right at the beginning of nighttime. I mean, that's always an interesting like thing you have to think about. But yeah, the weapons are super cool. The customization's really cool. It's V Rising has done super well. So I uh, highly recommend this game if you like ARPGs or survival craft games. But moving on to just a few days ago, there's a game that I have always been a big fan of that came out on the GameCube back, I think, in 2003 or 4, something like that. And that game is known as Batten Kaitos. And then there was a second game that released, too, at some point. This game has been on GameCube only and nothing else for years. It has never released anywhere else. It has just been a fantastic JRPG that has always been stuck on a past console. And without any fanfare, without any announcements, without any anything. Bandai Namco just did an HD remaster of it and released it a few days ago. It was uh, nine days ago they did this. That was super unexpected. I I was just blown away because I was like, I, I was thinking I was only going to be able to ever play this on GameCube, but Batten Kaitos 1 and 2 HD remaster released on Steam uh, June 17th of this year. Batten Kaitos is just so phenomenal. The combat system is the first thing that, that sticks out to me. I know that I say that about a lot of these, but it is just done so well and it's such a unique concept so the customization on this game isn't necessarily like weapons or armor that you equip to your character it's actually a deck builder so like all of the different attacks that you can use and what weapon that you use to use those attacks are built up in a card deck that might be like a shield or a sword or some kind of special magic ability or you know any number of things and you build that deck up and then when you get into a battle uh, there's an offensive turn and a defensive turn and each one of those turns you are drawing a number of cards from the deck and you get to choose from the cards that you draw which ones you're going to select and if it's an offensive term, uh, turn you want to be able to draw the highest damage offensive attacks that you have um, that would always be ideal but when you're in your defensive turn you want to be drawing uh, the best defensive cards that you have so it's always really interesting trying to like balance out your deck and be like oh you know do i want to uh, have more defense do i want to have more offense there's also certain cards that can do both so you can kind of choose on how much of those you want in there and there's also like a party building aspect of it too so you have your own little party of, of people that are coming with you and then you get to customize all those people as well so it's just a really good party jrpg uh done in a very unique way enemy variety is really interesting the bosses are super cool the enemies are really interesting i think some of the first enemies you find are like these giant scorpion bats which look really sick sorry they look really cool i should say beautiful art style every the backgrounds are always hand drawn to everything and it just looks phenomenal and stunning one of the best looking games on the gamecube in my opinion and it actually still holds up pretty well um, after its hd remaster um, everything looks really good and yeah batten kaitos
So that, you know, is just came out a few days ago and we're at the, about the middle point of the year. So I think at the end of the year, I am going to do a video where I talk about the best games, the top 10 maybe of the year. And I'm curious to see how many of these are going to show up in that video and how many are going to get dropped off. Check out Ultros again. Let me just plug that game one more time. If you liked the video, please leave a like, subscribe. If there are any games that you think were really good for this year that I should check out, I would love to hear about them. I like, you know, finding and, and playing new games all the time. So please uh, let me know about those in the comments. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.